Welcome to the first episode in a Legendarium series called The Worst Jobs in History. In this episode, Ancient Greece, we will take a look at the life and work of the Clock Watcher, the Executioner, the Fishmonger, the Silver Miner, and the Dentist. Clock watchers in ancient Greece were not idle employees who tracked the minutes until they could go home, but specialists who kept time for the courts. When courts were in session, the clock watchers watched the clock, and instead of digital watches, the clock watcher used a device called a klepsidreia, which the Greeks also called a water thief. It positioned two clay or bronze pots on top of one another, and the clock watcher filled the top pot, allowing the water to drip through a standard-sized hole carved into the bottom. A court case would simply last the time that it took the dripping water to fill the bottom jar. And whenever a lawyer read a court document, the, wa the clock watcher would stop the clock with a wax plug. These water thieves came in different sizes, with a small clepsidre that only held about six minutes worth of water, used for minor cases like inheritance disputes. Major criminal cases, however, would use much larger clepsidre, and outside the courts, the clock watchers also served in military camps, tracking the time for changing sentries. And in the time of ancient Rome, timekeeper slaves would shout the hour as the sun moved between the two largest buildings near the Forum. While the clock watchers saw justice being done, the carnifex or executioner carried it out. Typically, the carnifex would be a public slave owned by the city and assigned the task of executing slaves and foreigners. Greek citizens considered the job to be so vile that the carnifex was forbidden from living around anyone else. Instead, he lived in a hovel outside the city walls in a suitably filthy locale used for the torture and execution of the condemned. Since the gallows had not yet been invented, the carnifex would manually strangle his victims with a rope. In addition, they administered torture, usually scourging or whipping their victims. And for those who didn't want to get involved in such a trade, one could always become a fishmonger. The fishmongers rose before dawn each day to fetch the catch from the boats at port and get back to the city before daylight. Greek fishwives gained international fame for their stout physique and husky arms, which they used to whack tunnies into steaks, which they then passed out to their customers. The fishmongers also had to be loud enough to outshout their competition for getting attention to their shop. They hurried to sell the merchandise before midday, as the fish would usually go rotten in the sun before lunch. They would then spend the afternoon cleaning out the fish guts and blood from the wooden tables and stone floors of their shop. While we tend to remember the glory of Athens from the philosophy of Plato to the architecture of the Acropolis, it's easy to forget that all of these wonders were financed by the work of silver mine slaves. Many of Athens' greatest public works were financed by the rich silver mines of Larium, with the mines fed in a rent-a-slave program. Over the decades, hundreds of thousands of slaves were leased by their owners to work in Larium, some of them boys as young as 10 years old, as they fit best into the tight quarters of the underground shafts. Whether man or boy, the silver miners spent their days flat on their backs, digging out silver ore with a bronze pick by torchlight. After filling a bucket, they passed it fireman style to the next slave over until the ore got out of the tunnel. Some of these shafts could go almost 400 feet deep. And on the surface next to the mine shafts, charcoal fires burned constantly, smelting the ore and filling the air with poisonous fumes. When not working, the silver miners were kept in chains. Now, we often think of dentistry as a modern profession, but it all goes all the way back to ancient Greece. In fact, when Rome conquered Greece, Greeks made up most of the dentists, generally slaves who catered to the Roman elite. Tooth decay was less common because there was no sugar. But many Romans ground down their teeth because bread contained stone dust from the milling process, in which grain was ground into flour between millstones. 
Common folk had to cope with dental pain with wine and catmint infusions, but the Greek specialists who catered to the Roman elite believed that the cause of dental pain was in fact tiny worms who infested the mouth. To combat said worms, they had their patients fumigate their mouths with a charred mixture of narcotic henbane and soft tar, then had them rinse out their mouths with wine. Other dentists simply removed teeth with pliers and then rammed tiny fire irons into the holes left by the removed tooth. Yet the most resourceful of all Greek dentists could create their own dental prosthetics of false teeth, including bridges made of flat gold bands to hold them in place. And that wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you saw, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.